Today we're going to be making some monkfish stock and then we're going to take that stock and we're going to turn it into a delicious Norwegian fish soup. So what I've done here is gathered up all the ingredients that we're going to use today. First of all I'm going to start chopping uh, some stuff. We also have a bunch of herbs here, some bay leaves, parsley, thyme, tiktok tiktok, cloves, some pepper and some unsalted butter as well. Of course we have that big fish head that we cut apart yesterday. Ah, and of course the most important ingredients. We're also going to use about two cups worth of wine. So you know what, while I'm chopping up all the things I figured why don't we just get started on the butter. So I'm just tossing it in here and we're going to heat it up on a pretty low heat I figure. Now let's get chopping. So I'm just going to go ahead and roughly cut up all the different ingredients. We're just using it as stock so I'm not going to even bother taking off the skin of the carrots. So the same here with celery which i just washed it and now we're chopping it off roughly i'm just gonna take these edges away because they didn't look very beautiful and of course last but not least let's do the onions as well i love onions it's so delicious like everything in this recipe we're just doing it roughly because we're just gonna strain this out uh, when we're done anyway it's just for the flavor of all the stuff so that looks about ready and i'm just done with the chopping i'm almost crying here from all this onion so i'm just gonna dump this all into the pot and uh quick and painless or slightly painful for me since i'm crying but i'm just gonna turn down the heat a little bit and i'm just gonna start stirring i just want to get the onion here translucent should take about five minutes or so i guess so while that thing is simmering away, why don't we get started on the next and most important part here to taste the wine. So I bought this Italian, it's a kind of a dry wine which is going to be excellent for adding to the stock afterwards. But you know what, we have some time now while the onions and uh, all this stuff are uh, boiling in a pan. So before we measure it up for the pot, why don't we give ourselves a little... Uh, a little taste test here as well. Alright guys, here's to a great month of monkfish. Oh, that's good. That's really good. I'm buying that one for myself later as well. Not just for you, Pot. Anyway, if this is your first time watching me, I'm doing this challenge where I'm cooking 31 monkfish dishes in 31 days. And today's day one, so we're starting with stock. We're going to use it in a lot of recipes over the next month. All right, so the onions, carrots and celery is finally starting to look good here. So now I'm going to take this beast of a fish head and I'm going to toss that into the pot here as well. The only thing I've done to it is pretty much remove the gills here and uh, just cleaned it off a little bit. It's about uh, 8 pounds or almost 4 kilos. We are going to cover up the fish now. The recipe I'm basing this off said use parchment paper but I don't have any of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the lid on here. The fish head is going to be done pretty much when it is opaque. Can't really look through it anymore. Probably going to be a bit. I'm just going to let it uh, heat up here slowly. So I'm using pretty low heat here as well. Correction, I am actually the proud owner of parchment paper. Don't judge me, I am a bachelor. Sometimes I don't know this stuff. So let's get that covering the fish there and that should help out to the process here. So it's been about 15 minutes. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, it smells delicious. I don't know if it's opaque, but it was pretty opaque to begin with. So let's move on here. So we're gonna add two cups of wine and bring it simmer. So it's time for wine and spice and everything nice. I'm just gonna let that simmer up and then we're gonna add all the spices as well here. No more parchment paper, by the way. Well, I'm hearing the distinct sound of a simmer. So I assume that means my nice wine no longer has alcohol in it. The next step that we're going to do here is to be adding all the spices into the mix. Now it says to use a spice satchel. Uh, sadly, I don't have the YouTube money for that yet anyway. So we're just gonna dump them in there with the... Oh, Mm, it smells good already with the other stuff. So let me just make sure that it's all into the sauce here. On the topic of YouTube money, I am actually planning to turn all of this into kind of a cookbook in the end, but it's probably going to be a while. I have a lot of recipes to test out and learn and master first. In the end, that will probably be a thing. So if you're interested in that, you can already check out tourthefisherman.com slash book. And I'll set up some kind of system there so you can be alerted when it's ready or if it is ready you can already buy it there in the future i think we're ready to add water now since it's already boiling here we're gonna add about two gallons worth of water into the mix here since this is a big pot and let's pop the lid back on here now this is going to need to simmer here for about 45 minutes once it boils up i'm going to turn the heat down to a low simmer 45 minutes so we have a lot of time so you know what why don't we get started on the fish soup for the soup here we're going to need about eight ounces worth 
of monkfish so we're gonna slice that up afterwards also gonna use a nice carrot hair 0.4 cups worth of milk tiny dash of cream and just a tablespoon of flour 50 grams of peas that would equate to about one third of a cup in addition to this we're also going to use about 1.2 cups worth of that broth that we're working on and this probably doesn't surprise you but we need a little bit of chives and the big heroes of norwegian cooking salt and pepper especially salt let me begin here by taking off about eight ounces from this nice monkfish fillet so this is tail meat i think you could use cheeks as well for this they will be a little tougher though and we're gonna slice off tiny peats and we're gonna compare all the different days of aging this is pretty fresh monkfish so it's a little bit tougher in the meat as well but that's fine since it's in soup well it turns out i'm not as good at guesstimating as i thought so we needed a little slice more there on monkfish flesh you usually have a little bit of skin left so we're gonna need to take this off this blue stuff that's actually the second layer of skin on the monkfish we're just gonna go ahead and chop that off quickly here as that is not very tasty at all it's kind of chewy so i'm just gonna clean up the meat there um, as for the sizing of these monkfish fillets, we're just gonna cut them up into, uh, well, definitely less than an inch, something along those lines, as cubes. So the idea here is that you should be able to fit it on your spoon, right? As far as cutting up monkfish, I like to go against the grain when we're slicing it, so that it doesn't fall apart so easily. We're also gonna slice up this carrot hair. Now, you're gonna get to know me, I'm not a big fan of taking off the skin on anything possible <laughs> but if you want to take off the skin you know do you do your thing slice it in half once from top to bottom and then from here we just cube it i'm going to show you a little trick here we're going to take our flour as well as our little milk pour the milk in with the flour the trick is that i'm going to take a water sealant something that won't leak I'm going to close that up. Just a regular jar, mason jar will probably work fine as well. We're going to shake this up. The reason we're adding the flour is so the soup gets a little bit thicker. This is a really quick and easy way to do it. Just make sure it all is incorporated in there. And that's really all we can do until the broth here is ready. So let's hope that thing is going to hurry up. And guess what is finally done. Dum, 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 dum. The next step is going to be that we need to strain this delicious broth here. But I'm thinking let's first remove this big fish bones since they uh, <laughs> they're not going to go through the little uh, strainer there so we're ready to put stock here through this uh, little strainer so i've tried to remove most of the impurities as well as all that <laughs> the big monkfish had there so that we don't have to deal with that later now you could also use something like a cheesecloth for this but uh, <laughs> like i said i clearly don't have one let me finish this up and then we're going to fill it into bottles beautiful broth there is done wow look at that it smells amazing you have no idea now to store the broth what i'm going to do is fill them into these plastic bottles i like plastic soda bottles because you can fill them pretty full and since we're going to freeze these they're they're not going to expand so much that they break now you could probably use something else as well but i really prefer these and don't fill them too full either because then they expand too much about maybe four fifths is a good start these are going to last about two months or so frozen you could also put them in the fridge and they're going to last uh, three four days probably i prefer freezing them they are best fresh of course and we're going to go ahead and test it out right now so let's continue fish soup so i'm gonna heat up my pot here and we're gonna add about 1.2 cups worth of that delicious broth that we just made and i'm gonna toss in those carrots and we're just gonna wait until this comes to a boil so our beautiful soup is coming to a boil here we're gonna slowly very slowly add this uh, mixture of milk and flour in here i'm turning the heat down i'm stirring and I'm just gonna slowly, slowly pour this in. And this is gonna thicken up the soup a little bit. And now I'm just keeping an eye on it for five minutes and letting it simmer a little bit. So the carrots are a little bit harder than what I would prefer. So I'm gonna give it a couple of more minutes here. And I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit here now. And we are going to throw in all our fish as well as our no longer frozen peas. I'm just gonna let this sit here at very low heat for about five minutes or so. While that is running, I'm going to toast two pieces of bread and then we're gonna add in our uh, cream. Now you wanna turn off the heat at this point. Stir that in. Gonna salt and pepper a little bit to taste. Oh, and here is the result from <laughs> the broth. Wow, oh, it looks so delicious. 
and we are ready to plate our uh, beautiful creation here. Let's not forget our bread here with some simple butter on it. And let's sprinkle some chives on here as the finishing touches. Wow, this looks so amazing. Dum, 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 dum. All right, let's finally give it a taste test then. Some pure soup first of all. Mm. Well, that's so good. I have no idea. And as a Norwegian, we like to eat it with bread. Sometimes I like to dip a little bit in there. It's incredibly filling. Mm. And all the milk and cream really adds to it. And that brought really recommend it now i'm gonna to put together a list of uh, all the ingredients and like recipes step by step so if you want to cook this yourself i'm gonna add a link down in the video description and pinned comment with exact measurements that was day one of the challenge if it every day is like this i'm super excited tomorrow i'm gonna to try to make a japanese dish with some of the liver so that's gonna be super exciting so i'm gonna link it here once it's done and yeah thanks for watching this one and i'm gonna enjoy this delicious food here along with the rest of my wine